Number 17. Here is 1943s Lincoln sent in MS-68 condition. According to NGC, of the three steel sent issues, the San Francisco Mint edition is slightly scarcer than the others, but it is certainly not rare. Collectors should use care in selecting just the right coin, as steel cents had striking issues that were seemingly unique to this composition. Among the problem areas is the final numeral of the date, which is often weak or even filled in altogether. This wartime steel penny ended up selling for $1,440. Number 16. This is 1969 D. Lincoln sent in Mint State 65 Red. Although uncirculated, it's not the high-end grade, or condition rarity for the issue. So what makes this scent so valuable then? It's highly elusive coin because of missing initials of the engraver on the reverse, to the right of memorial. Otherwise called no FG scent. This error scent was sold for $505.25. Number 15. Here is 2005 Lincoln scent with satin finish. Graded as MS-70 red by PCGS. Representative of absolute numismatic perfection, with no blemishes or contact marks whatsoever. The hairline crossing over the bow tie is on the window of the slab not the coins itself. This ultimate gem ended up selling for $1,920. Number 14. This is 1966 Kennedy Half Dollar from Special Mint Set. Otherwise called SMS Half Dollar. This collectible 50 cent piece comes with missing engraver's initials as well. There is no sign of FG on the reverse. Graded as SP67 by PCGS this exquisite half ended up selling for $2,820. Number 13. This is 1996 Lincoln cent struck on a 1996 P. Roosevelt dime planchet. Graded in mint state 67 by NGC. Obverse die struck reverse of the dime and reverse die vice versa. This double denomination coin ended up selling for $4,080. Number 12. Here is 2000 P. Sacagawea dollar struck multiple times. Third and fourth strikes 50% off center. Graded as MS-64 by PCGS. According to Heritage, the first strike was normal, but the piece failed to eject, and instead rotated a few degrees clockwise before its second strike. The coin was then only partially ejected, and was struck a third time, widely off center toward 8 o'clock, and at 8 o'clock relative to the first two strikes. The fourth and final strike was in a similar position but shifted slightly southward. Four dates and mint marks are visible, although the date from the third strike is faint. Lustrous and cup-shaped with attractive orange, rose, and ice blue toning. It was sold for $4,887.50. Number 11. This is 1999 P. Jefferson Nickel in MS-68 condition with full steps. Registry set collectors actively pursue superb gem examples of this issue, although the present piece is in a class by itself. This 1999p nickel is the single finest certified at PCGS. The strike is needle sharp, and the radiant surfaces yield a hint of champagne toning. It was sold for $4,465. Number 10. Here is 1998's Lincoln Scent Proof with Close AM graded as PR70 Deep Cameo by PCGS. The Close AM, a characteristic of business strike dies, was used on a small minority of proof dies in 1998, creating this sought-after variety. This is a perfect orange-red, thoroughly contrasted example showing absolutely no trace of carbon or other impairment. It was sold for $4,406.25. Number 9. Moving on with this 1995 D. Lincoln scent with double die obverse. Graded as MS-67 by PCGS. The motto, In God We Trust, is clearly doubled on this amazing superb gem. This piece has rich orange mint luster with noticeably stippled surfaces from die erosion, as struck. Scattered spots are consistent with the grade. Here is an incredibly important opportunity for those collectors seeking the finest available Lincoln scents. It was sold for $4,200. Number 8. This is 2010 D Shield sent in MS-67 red condition. Due to the extraordinary planchet quality, it likely originated in a mint set. Lustrous and fully struck with seamless gold color aside from a minute reverse rim spot at 430. It was sold for $4,993.75. Number 9. 
Number 7. This is 1999 P. Connecticut quarter struck on an experimental planchet. Graded in Mint State 62 by PCGS. In 1999, the U.S. Mint tested manganese alloy planchets for the new golden Sacagawea dollar before dies for that design were available. Instead, 1999 P. State quarter dies, which had a similar diameter, were used to strike a limited number of experimental planchet pieces. Specimens are known for all five 1999 state designs, Delaware, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Georgia, Connecticut, and each is very rare. This is a caramel gold representative with hints of silver-blue toning. A lengthy, narrow line crosses Washington's bus truncation and is possibly as made, on the planchet prior to the strike. It was sold for $4,320. Number 6. Here is 2007 D. Lincoln cent struck on a steel washer. Graded in Mint State 64 by PCGS. Weight of this extraordinary error coin is 2.5 grams. He strike is perfectly centered, with full, squared rims. The central washer hole is reminiscent of the annular patterns of the 19th century. Dusky steel gray patina covers each side, while the devices are sharp. It was sold for $6,600. Number 5. This is 2002 D. Sacagawea dollar struck on a quarter planchet. Graded as MS-66 by NGC. A remarkable piece with brilliant light gray surfaces and exceptional luster. This error would be difficult to spot, due to the similar planchet size, although the color difference is unmistakable. It fetched a sum of $8,050 at auction. Number 4. Here is 2006 P. North Dakota State Quarter struck on a steel washer. Graded as MS-62 by PCGS. According to Heritage, there are not many magnetic U.S. quarters, but here is one. By 2006, the Mint Riddler system was well advanced, and it was highly unlikely for the present wrong planchet error to escape the smelter. This is an oval-shaped example with a slightly off-center hole, as made. The rim is present for portions of the left borders, while part of the right side design is off the flan due to its undersized host. This highly elusive error coin ended up selling for $8,625. Number 3. This is 2015 one ounce gold eagle with obverse indented by plastic fragment. Both coin and fragment included in the lot. The dark plastic fragment weights 1 gram, and is housed in the same two piece holder as the indented one ounce gold eagle. The kidney-shaped fragment is wafer-thin, and was struck into the gold coin above the Capitol building with a right jog over Liberty's torch, head, and chest. It was sold for $9,600. Number 2. This is 2000 P. Jefferson Nickel struck on a 1978 Lincoln cent. Graded as MS-64 red and brown by Annex. An error that presumably required some help either from a mint worker or a mischievous mint visitor, since the cent host was struck 22 years before its nickel overstrike. The 1978 cent date is faint but legible near the back of Jefferson's head. A lustrous near gem with dusky gold and lilac red toning. It was sold for $12,075. Number 1. And here is 1993 D. Lincoln cent struck with dime reverse die. Graded in Mint State 65 Red by PCGS. A rare double denomination mule. U.S. coins struck with dyes of different denominations are extremely rare. Until recent years, none were known. Aside from malfeasance of a mint worker, the mule denomination error is only possible when the denominations involved are similar in diameter. A cent is 19 mm, and a dime is 17.9 mm, a difference of 1.1 mm or approximately 5%. Given the billions of cents struck annually at the federal mints, it was inevitable that an absent-minded worker would pair cent and dime dies. Presumably, the mistake was discovered and the struck pieces were destroyed before dispersal, with the single exception of the present survivor. This lustrous gem shows the characteristics expected of a cent and dime mule. The dime side has a broad, tall rim, since metal was forced into the collar of the dime die by the wider diameter cent die opposite. As a result, the cent side has a soft strike near the rim, since metal in the vicinity flowed into the dime collar. The strike on the devices is normal. It was sold for $51,750. If you have any questions or want to share your own numismatic discoveries, please feel free to leave a comment below. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. God's will, until the next time. Ladies and gentlemen, coin enthusiasts and collectors, welcome back to our channel.
I'm thrilled to have you join me today for another exciting journey into the fascinating world of numismatics. In today's video, we're going to embark on an exhilarating quest to uncover 16 rare and valuable coins, mostly error coins that have made waves in the world of coin collecting. These aren't your everyday pocket change, these are the coins that can command staggering prices at auctions. So hit that subscribe button below and let's dive in. Number 16. This is 1924 S Lincoln Cent in MS65 brown condition. An amazing off-center Lincoln Cent with mint orange surfaces that are tempered with golden tan toning. Off-center to 7 o'clock with the obverse rim through the bottom of Lincoln's portrait, and with all of the date and legend details intact except Libe which is off the planchet. The reverse details, off-center to 11 o'clock, feature everything from 1 cent downward. It was sold for $2,056.25. Number 15. This is 1977 D. Jefferson nickel with obverse die cap and reverse mirror brockage. According to Stax Bowers, this fascinating piece was struck once properly, yet failed to eject from the press. Instead it capped the obverse die, and picked up a crisp brockage from the obverse of another struck coin on its reverse. Since the brockage is complete and shows no evidence of distension, we expect that this coin freed itself from the press right after acquiring the brockage. The cap, while fairly deep at the upper obverse, does not extend all the way around that side, further evidence for a brief period adhered to the obverse die. A brilliant and beautiful gem, and a rare and desirable major mint error. This amazing error nickel ended up selling for $2,640. Number 14. Here is 1999 P. Washington quarter struck on an experimental planchet. Graded in mint state 67 by NGC. The companion piece to the Pennsylvania State Quarter offered above, this piece is also struck on an olive gold manganese alloy planchet at a time when the mint was searching for a suitable alloy for the Sacagawea dollar that was eventually introduced in 2000. Sharply struck and satiny with a few swirls of light haziness in the center of the reverse that represent shallow flaws in the planchet. It was sold for $2,640. Number 13. This is 1969 D. Lincoln sent with first strike brockage. Graded in mint state 64 red and brown by PCGS. A spectacular mint error, the reverse of this coin, mounted up in the PCGS holder, displays a sharp, clear mirror image of the Lincoln portrait design from the obverse of a reverse die cap. The obverse is struck properly, that side of the coin displaying light lilac rose patina to an otherwise medium orange surface. The brockage side is richly toned in steel olive, although lighter pale pink color is evident in the recesses. Brockages are among the more appealing mint errors, and first strikes with full details such as this are quite rare. It was sold for $2,640. Number 12. Moving on with this 1971 D. Eisenhower dollar with reverse indented by a dime planchet. Graded in mint state 64 by PCGS. Excellent surfaces and luster on the host coin, with the indented area blank save for a hint of the overstruck eagle's wing and body, nearly flattened out by the force of the second strike when the dime planchet slipped on the just struck Ike dollar. Scarce as an error and in a nice collector grade for quality. It was sold for $2,232.50. Number 11. Here is 1942 Lincoln cent struck on a dime planchet. Uncertified coin but most likely in AU condition according to Stax Bowers. Lustrous steel gray with the initial appearance of a 1943 steel scent, but there the similarity ends. The diameter is smaller than that of a scent with the obverse rim tight to the bottom of Lincoln's portrait and the L of Liberty, the reverse rim intersects the tops of E Pluribus Unum. Scarce and desirable coin that ended up selling for $2,415. Number 10. This is 1976 D. Washington quarter with obverse die cap. Graded in mint state 67 by NGC. This beautiful superb gem obverse die cap was created when the planchet was fed into the press prior to another struck coin being ejected. Secondly, the newly fed planchet was struck, and adhered to the die for several subsequent strikes, sharpening the obverse impression and softening the brockage impression on the reverse. Well centered with the rim of the die cap even and approximately 3mm to 4mm in height. It was sold for $2,880. Number 9. Here is 1968 D. Kennedy half dollar indented by a half dollar struck on a quarter planchet. 
graded as AU58 by PCGS. This half dollar was struck normally the first time, then a new planchet was inserted into the press, but it was a quarter-sized planchet that was struck by the half dollar press first, thus the indent shows the flattened eagle of the half dollar along with Kennedy's head in cues as well as God in cues and backwards in the indent from this process. A few surface scratches on the obverse cheek of Kennedy, perhaps from the ejection process. It was sold for $2,350. Number 8. This is 1958 Lincoln cent struck on a struck 1958 Cuban 1 centavo. Surfaces are blemish-free and are a wash in cartwheel mint frost on both sides. The copper nickel composition has taken on light russet and slightly cloudy golden toning, much like the similar piece to follow. Through 1960, the United States mint at Philadelphia was striking a variety of coins for the Republic of Cuba, one of them the diminutive copper nickel 1 centavos featuring the left-facing bust of Jose Marti. At least one of these coins evidently remained in a hopper that supplied blanks to a press coining 1958 Lincoln cents, resulting in this incredible dual country error. It was sold for $2,990. Number 7. Here is 2002 S Proof Roosevelt Dime with Reverse Die Cap. Graded as PR67 Ultra Cameo by NGC. A fascinating error, and one of the rarest die caps showcased at Stax Bowers. The reverse impression is razor sharp within the base of a shallow cap, the planchet freeing itself, or being removed, from the reverse die after only a few additional impressions, likely one or two. The other side of this cap also exhibits a razor sharp strike, from the obverse die. Both sides are brilliant with deeply reflective fields supporting frosty design elements. It was sold for $3,360. Number 6. Moving on with this 2002 D Sacagawea dollar struck on a quarter planchet. Graded in mint state 66 by NGC. An interesting wrong planchet error created when a standard planchet for quarter got fed between Sacagawea dollar dies, this one produced at the Denver Mint. Visually striking for both the quality and the obviously incorrect composition. Well centered on the slightly smaller quarter blank, with good detail and narrow rims complete around the circumference on each side. Fully brilliant with exceptional cartwheels of luster and only the most trivial handling. It was sold for $5,280. Number 5. 1976 D Bicentennial Quarter Struck on a Dime Planchet. Graded in Mint State 64 by NGC. This is an extremely rare error coin with fewer than four pieces known to exist. Boldly lustrous surfaces, fully brilliant and with no marks worthy of mention. Nicely centered but just slightly high, giving room for the date and mint mark to be visible, if not complete. Sharp central detail. A visually dramatic error due to the large difference in sizes between the quarter dies and dime planchet. These dramatic differences make these stand out during production and they rarely get released, so such off-metal coins are very rare by their nature. It was sold for $6,462.50. Number 4. This is 1944 P. Jefferson nickel struck on a scent planchet. Brassy reddish copper patina suggests that the scent planchet is one of those made from copper salvaged from cartridge cases used in World War II. Nicely centered in strike with otherwise bold definition, the peripheral devices are partially or wholly off the flan due to the error. It was sold for $7,475. Number 3. Here is Washington Quarter mated pair of struck together coins. Both examples are individually graded and encapsulated by PCGS, as follows, coin number 1, uniface obverse, proof 64, and coin number 2, uniface reverse, proof 62. The PCGS inserts assign the uniface reverse designation to coin number 1 and the uniface obverse designation to coin number 2. The obverse is toned with a pleasing blend of gold, rose and blue and both sides are boldly reflective. A neat mated pair with strong visual appeal that is especially compelling as proof errors are quite difficult to find at all, much less as a mated pair. Hello fellow numismatists and coin enthusiasts. Welcome back to our numismatic journey. In today's captivating episode, we're diving deep into the world of rare coins, uncovering 16 hidden treasures that hold the potential for substantial premiums. If you're passionate about collecting coins or simply intrigued by the allure of numismatics, you won't want to miss this exciting exploration. Hits that subscribe button below this video and let's get started. Number 16. This is 1967 Roosevelt Dime with double die obverse. 
graded as AU53 by PCGS. The doubling on obverse letterings are the slightest so you would need strong magnifying glass to spot it. Also this specimen comes with collar die clash, this doubling on the western rims, otherwise called railroad rim. This elusive specimen ended up selling for $600. Number 15. This is 1941 Jefferson Nickel struck on ascent planchet. Graded in Mint State 61 Brown by NGC. According to Stax Bowers, the obverse impression is flush to the left border, the reverse to the lower border, the peripheral detail in the opposite area is incomplete due to the size differential between the scent planchet and the larger nickel dies. Virtually all design elements are at least partially discernible, nonetheless, the date readily evident and most features bold. Richly original antique copper patina with flint gray outlines to most devices. Scarce, and sure to catch the eye of major mint error enthusiasts. It was sold for $1,020. Number 14. This is 1947 Jefferson Nickel in MS67 condition with full steps. According to Jamie Hernandez, the 1947 P. Jefferson Nickel is one of the more common issues in the series. Only in MS66 or higher is it scarce. With the full steps designation, it is also common up to about MS65 condition. In MS66 full steps it becomes scarce with a probably no more than 1 or 200 examples known. In MS67 full steps it is really tough to find and less than a dozen or so examples exist, with few or no examples known in better condition. This specimen with full steps, ended up selling for $1,140. Number 13. Here is 1936 Washington Quarter in PR66 condition. Nicely preserved specimen out of meager mintage of 3,837. According to NGC, Unlike the proof quarters of 1937 and later years, the 1936 edition was coined with dies taken from the same hubs used for currency coin dies. These dies were polished to give them a mirror finish, but they were identical in design details to the dies used for ordinary coinage. The brilliance of 1936 proof quarters is not equal to that of later dates, as the mint was still developing its techniques for such pieces. Gems of this issue are in limited supply, and very few examples have been certified higher than PF66. This example was sold for $1,260 on September 19, 2023. Number 12. This is 1943's Lincoln Cent struck on a dime planchet. Graded as VF20 by Annex. Well centered on the dime planchet, the Lincoln Cent design is fully appreciable with moderate, even where that is commensurate with the assigned grade. Wispy hairlines and a somewhat glossy texture are noted for accuracy. A scarce wrong planchet error that is particularly desirable due to its association by date and type with the famous 1943 copper cents. It was sold for $1,440. Number 11. Here is 1954 D. Lincoln cent with repunched mint mark. Graded in mint state 66 plus read by PCGS and affirmed by CAC. Most 1954 D cents were well made in terms of strike and die state, but spotting and staining is common for this and most issues of the 1950s. Several repunched mint mark varieties are known for this issue. The triple punch D is also known in a later die state, LDS, in which one of the extra mint marks has been eradicated from polishing of the die to extend its life. This one was sold for $1,680. Number 10. Moving on with this 1951 D. Jefferson Nickel in MS66 condition with full steps. Billowy mint luster blends with delicate champagne pink iridescence on both sides of this beautiful gem. A semi-key date issue among 1950s Jefferson Nickels, the 1951 D was produced to the extent of 20,460,000 pieces with examples rare above the basal MS66 FS grade level. It was sold for $1,680. Number 9. This is 2000 P. Sacagawea Cheerios dollar in MS66 condition. According to Stax Bowers, a premium gem example of one of the most fascinating and rare modern varieties in existence, this frosty piece has surfaces free of spots, toning, or handling. Early in 2000, General Mills, makers of Cheerios breakfast cereal, coupled with the U.S. Mint to place new Sacagawea dollars in boxes of their cereal and heighten the nation's awareness of the coin. Some 10 million boxes of Cheerios were part of the promotion, each containing a newly minted Lincoln cent. Another 5,500 boxes also contained a 2,000 dated Sacagawea dollar. 
This M66 gem with enhanced tail feathers ended up selling for $2,160. Number 8. This is 1968 S Proof Link and Scent Struck on a Dime Planchet. Graded as PR64 Cameo by NGC. A rare wrong planchet error involving modern US mint proof coinage. The scent design is well centered on the dime planchet, all devices sharply rendered with a frosty texture that contrasts markedly with deeply reflective fields. Bright and brilliant with outstanding visual appeal. Although the San Francisco Mint was engaged in striking both proof and circulation strike scents in 1968, the facility struck only proof dimes that year. It was sold for $2,520. Number 7. Here is 1968 S. Jefferson Nickel in MS66 condition with full steps. Outstanding technical quality and eye appeal of this underrated strike rarity in the Jefferson Nickel series. Brilliant surfaces are fully lustrous with a delightful softly frosted texture. Impressively sharp in overall detail, this coin would do justice to the finest collection of the type. It was sold for $3,120. Number 6. This is 1942 Lincoln sent in PR66 condition. Very nicely impressed and kept proof penny with ultra cameo contrast. According to NGC, 1942 was the final year in which proof coins could be ordered as singles, and sales of the sent out paced complete proof sets by more than 10,000 pieces. This is the more readily available of the 1936-42 issues in top grades, and it is also the one most likely to be seen with varying degrees of cameo contrast. This one was sold for $4,387.50 with buyer's fee. Number 5. This is 1969 Lincoln Cent double struck on a Canadian 10 cents planchet. Graded in Mint State 62 by NGC. A dramatic and rare double mint error, this Lincoln Cent is not only struck on a planchet intended for a Canadian 10 cent coin, but it is also boldly double struck with several degrees rotation between impressions. Remnants of the first strike are boldest along the back of Lincoln's portrait, at the date, and along the upper reverse border. Brilliant semi-reflective surfaces with the basic link and scent design fully appreciable despite the error. It was sold for $4,320. Number 4. This is 1938 Washington Quarter in PR68 condition. Available in lower grades, the 1938 proof Washington Quarter is conditionally rare in PR68, and no numerically finer pieces are reported by PCGS. According to Heritage, this registry set contender displays beautiful mirrors and satiny relief elements, with pristine overall surfaces. Lovely iridescent toning graces each side. It was sold for $5,760. Number 3. Moving on with this 1914 S. Lincoln sent in MS-65 red condition. A remarkably well-produced, carefully preserved example of this underrated issue among early date Lincoln sent issues. Richly original surfaces are bathed in a blend of warm golden brown and autumn orange, direct lighting calling forth the most vivid color. Fully struck throughout, the dyes have also imparted a delightful satin texture that remains as smooth and inviting as the day of production. It was sold for $4,560. Number 2. Here is vividly toned 1959 Washington Quarter. Graded in Mint State 67 by PCGS. Most condition census Washington quarters from the 50s are dramatically toned, and the present superb gem is no exception. Vivid blushes of cherry red, aquamarine, and orange patina alternate across lustrous and unmarked surfaces. It was sold for $17,250. Number 1. This is 1926 S. Lincoln sent in MS64 plus red condition. This San Francisco scent offers exceptional quality and eye appeal for an issue that is rarely seen with full red color. Both sides of this vivid beauty exhibit dominant pinkish rose color, the peripheries adorned with warmer reddish orange. It is sharply struck and has a satiny and smooth appearance that is suggestive of an even higher grade. The 1926S has a low mintage by the standards of this series, with just 4,550,000 pieces produced. It has long been regarded as semi to full key date issue in all grades, and the vast majority of collectors have settled for a worn example due to either availability or cost. This rare specimen was sold for $43,200. Thanks for watching this video. Consider subscribing to our channel for more captivating numismatic content. Have a good one.